Good morning, everyone. Jen Tozer, your portfolio manager here. I'm here to talk again about the banking crisis that's happening down in the States. I thought it was timely since earlier this month, we just saw the acquisition of First Republic by JP Morgan, and that got people turning their heads and specifically wondering what other shoe's gonna drop and what could the spillover effect be potentially into Canada. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to highlight some of the major differences between the US banking sector and the Canadian one. The first difference I'd like to highlight is mortgages. When you buy a house in the US, if you take a 25 year amortization, you can get a matching 25 year interest rate commitment from the bank. You can't get that in Canada. In Canada, we're lucky to get five. So in the US, even though we've had the pressure of rising interest rates on mortgage renewals in Canada, 65% of Americans who have mortgages have rates today that are still less than 3.65% and are going to stay there for the duration of their amortization. So this is quite good for an average American. But if you take it back to the banking sector, it now creates a problem because you have to now in a higher interest rate environment, pay a higher rate of return on your deposits. And that's 4% right now, pretty much across the board. And here you've got a lot of long term loans out at 3.5. This is where you're getting that mark to market problem coming in. Now, the second big issue that's different between Canada and the U.S. is that in Canada, we control 90% of all banking deposits on the top six banks. In the U.S., they have competition. So they do not control those 90% of deposits. Big brands like Fidelity or Vanguard and a variety of money market funds are competition. So clients want that 4%. They're not willing to just leave the money at the bank because it's the bank down the corner. So what does this mean for us economically? First of all, in 2008, what happened was the loan portfolio was bad. Here we are today in 2023, there are no problems with the loan portfolios. They actually might end up being quite profitable for the banks that take them over. The problem is that deposits have fled. So it's very different and that is not a Canadian issue. The second thing that to talk about in the banking sector is what do I expect? How is it going to be fixed? I expect that there are going to be some reforms that happen that make the banking sector in the US align a little bit more with how we do business in Canada. So watch for that to come. But economically, I think we're going to see a slowdown in the US because these small regional banks lent to all the small businesses, which of course drives the economy, and they're gonna have tighter lending rules. They're gonna be less able to lend. So that's a natural forming slowdown, which is better than the artificial slowdown we've had from hiking rates. So we're probably gonna see some pressure being taken off of us on the yield curve. That's my good news for today on the U.S. banking crisis. As always, give me a call if you have any questions.